Throughout humanity, there has been an expectation, a hope, a goal for achievement to land on the red planet, giving its name because of the iron oxide on its surface. Mars has rapidly been spread throughout our culture, starting from 1600s as still thoughts and projects are being worked on. Why should we go to Mars? People ask why we have to go to Mars while we have major problems here on Earth. I'd say a key point for this is that exploration and curiosity is in our DNA. We love exploring, whether it's complicated or not. Now, by landing on Mars, we can answer the questions that hasn't been answered for several years and open doors for a whole new world. What was mentioned now were pull factors, the things that attracted us to go to Mars, the feelings that we have that we want to go to Mars, and the motivation given us that we should visit the red planet. But now let's have a look at the push factors which will eventually force us to leave our planet Earth and end up there. There are three major reasons that we will dis discuss. Now, two of these reasons are still active. However, one of them is a possibility and can happen in the foreseeable future. Let's have a look. Number one, overpopulation. I'm sure most are familiar with this. Number two, pollution. Last but not least, possibilities for large-sized asteroids that can cause human extinction. Over the past few years, the population has been accelerated. Countries such as China, the USA, India have high uncontrollable birth rates. Laws were applied in specific countries to lower these birth rates, such as the Chinese government prohibited having more than one child per family for a long time. This not only helped China, but it's still in case with many different countries. Now, I want you all to imagine that you're in a situation that you are one out of one billion citizens in an overpopulated country. Most likely, you will be, you'll be failing to apply to a high-ranked job, the job that is well-paid, and you'll most likely fail to apply. And here is that you will live in a polluted area, which is high chances of you living on a polluted area. And also, one of the most important things is that these polluted areas, which are crowded, can cause disease among people. Now, let's take our magnifying glass and point it towards pollution. Have a look at this. Have you ever noticed the immediate climate change in your local area? Well, that's simply due to pollution. Greenhouse gases are being produced faster than you can ever imagine. And sadly, this leads to global warming. What happens is that when these greenhouse gases are being produced, they trap sun's heat in the atmosphere. And sadly, this ends up as ice caps being melted in the future. Now, this is a possibility a large-sized asteroid hitting us. Have you ever heard the rumors of large-sized asteroids that can end our lives? Well, yes, I have heard in daily news. But you know why it never happened? It's because we don't have the technology right now to capture all dangerous asteroids near us. And there might be some problems depending on our calculations, which leads to disinformation that you hear on your daily news. And these asteroids can hit any time. We have to be careful of them. So now, since we discussed these things, which uh, the reasons why we should go to Mars, 
let's have a look at the technology that will bring up bring us to Mars. How will we get to Mars? We will need a durable rocket that can travel eight months straight with high speed rate. And at this point, the Starship rocket is materialized by SpaceX. So here's the image of this spacecraft. This exists now. Um, this is the Starship SN10 that has been tested on high altitude flight and successfully landed in the ground. Let's suppose that the first humans land on Mars, and by first humans we mean 100 humans. According to Elon Musk, one Starship rocket can carry over 100 humans. And this human landing on Mars brings up an interesting question. What are the possible chemical and physical effects on people who will live on Mars? Well, to answer this question, we will have to study Mars well. We have collected many different accessible data from Mars, such as, um, uh, such as the rovers that was sent by NASA, captures images, gathers data, and sends to us. This makes us easier to think, um, to think and to conclude up as, let's say that first humans will live on Mars like this and st like that. Um, here is a video which I'll be showing right now. Oh, it doesn't work, yes. And uh, the thing that I was gonna mention is that Martian dust storms, Martian dust storms exist and they aren't that scary, but they can be really annoying. We will certainly not be able to use uh, advantage of solar power, wind power and geothermal energy due to lack of atmosphere. And here is that we answered to the question, we, we answered to the question, how will we get to Mars? But we have an answer to the question, when will we get to Mars? Uh, I mean, when will we call Mars our home? Scientists say that Mars will have a green land filled with oceans and lakes by more than 100,000 years. Yes, you might not exist at that time if you're watching this video. So here is, uh, we answered to the question, when will we call Mars our home? But at the same time, we answered to the question, why we should save our planet Earth to not to end up in this horrible red planet. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.